The popular coding website Scratch has been around since 2007. Scratch is known for its simplicity and active community. The Scratch team does regular community events to keep everyone engaged, and toxicity is almost non-existent on the platform as everyone who engages in it is banned. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, it took a long while to get to this process. Let's get into this episode of Scratch Unsolved Mysteries. taken down This is now the oldest known FNAF fan game not only on Scratch but in FNAF history in general Engaging on such a different level, uh, which really encourages this kind of mindset of seeing yourself and each other as makers of things and not just consumers. Well, it's pretty simple, but you're not going to like it. Leave Scratch. Yes, quitting Scratch is the most logical solution. Scratch was an ambitious project. Making a very accessible encoding language with a vibrant community had never been done before. When Scratch was finally launched, it slowly began racking up users. Most games at this time were simple. As more and more users came to the platform, a common complaint was that they wanted a way to share the games publicly for the world to see. So the Scratch team at MIT got to work and planted the seeds for what was to come. Scratch 2.0 was released shortly after. This version modernized Scratch. It completely changed the user interface and added many useful blocks for users to add to their projects. Most importantly, you can now share your projects with the rest of the Scratch community. You can like and favorite these games, comment, you can now even create profiles where you can post your games. This update was praised upon by the Scratch community and many new members joined, including myself. Games started becoming more advanced and overall better. Tutorials for new members were abundant and schools were even now implementing Scratch into their classes. Scratch was in its golden age and it could only go up from here. After the influx of new members, toxicity began popping up. To combat this, the Scratch community introduced the community guidelines. These guidelines were rules that all Scratch users and projects had to follow. They were fairly basic and nothing seemed like a ridiculous ask. If Scratch users didn't follow these projects, these guidelines, they would be warned or banned. 
In addition to this, the Scratch team hired some community moderators to help the situation. This tactic surprisingly worked quite, quite well until one community changed that forever. A popular new game series had just released in the year 2014 called Five Nights at Freddy's. As most of you know, it's a game where you have to survive until 6 a.m. for Motor's animatronics. The game also had an exciting lore, which is still being theorized to this date. The creator of Five Nights at Freddy's, Scott Cawthon, allowed fan games to be made. Fan games are, direct le are games that are directly influenced by another game. Many people, including myself, wanted to make a FNAF fan game, and Scratch at the time was the easiest way to do it. The FNAF Scratch community exploded within a few months, it became one of the most popular Scratch communities on Scratch. All good things don't last forever though. Within just one day, 80% of FNAF based projects would disappear. They didn't disappear because of copyright nor hack, it was because of the Scratch team themselves, implementing a moderation system that would effectively terminate all users and projects deemed scary or not fit for the community guidelines. So what happened? Remember when I said that Scratch was getting an influx of toxicity and hired moderators to solve the problem? Well, this was only a temporary solution by the Scratch team. Scratch has to pay these moderators because they are the same as any regular employee. If you look at the bottom of the page on Scratch, it says that Scratch is funded by donators. This means they have a hard time paying people because they actually make little to no money. Behind the scenes, they were working on a fully automatic moderation system that would save them money. The new system was put in place and all the moderators were inevitably fired, and this is why on Scratch Wiki you will only see moderators labeled as former moderators. The Scratch team at the time was also receiving complaints about FNAF fan games on Scratch from parents and schools about their scary content. So the Scratch team decided as a test to test their new system on FNAF fan games. As they did, this resulted in a massive purge on FNAF content on the platform. Many other communities were affected by this as well. The Scratch team later received many emails asking for the projects to be reshared. People also made projects saying that their project was unfairly banned. Now, this is where things get interesting again. Instead of the Scratch team fixing their system, they decided to take the easy route and outright ban many of these users who complained. The reason for this is still fairly unclear and I cannot find the information on why. The Scratch team also updated many bannable words, including the word Discord, which is a popular chat app. This is now deemed bannable. Projects criticizing the Scratch team's actions were taken down as well and their users punished. A major petition started in the FNAF community to bring back FNAF fan games. I also signed this. The user who started this was banned and everyone who signed it got their projects taken down. This type of moderation is fairly unprecedented. The Scratch team is winning a war that they started. A new version of Scratch was on the horizon though. This time it was Scratch 3.0. This brought hope and excitement in the community. When Scratch 3.0 was finally released, backlash was almost immediate. Many experienced Scratchers felt the blocks were childish and that nothing really changed. Scratch also made a moderation even stricter. If your project was reported, it would most likely be banned without any review from the Scratch team, which is what happened with my game one night of Puffy Scratch Check Fan Edition. So many from the people many people from the community left. Now this is just speculation, but I think the Scratch team made the site very childish to discourage FNAF creators from going on there. FNAF fans are usually older than the average Scratch user, so making the site childish would make it less appealing. The, the search term for FNAF was also banned. This is very big now because it's very hard to find a game without a search term. In the present day, the FNAF Scratch community still exists, but it's heavily suppressed. Many games do not reach old heights during the Golden Age. Overall, I think posting your FNAF fan games on Game Jolt is a much better idea. First of all, the company who runs Game Jolt acknowledges the great FNAF fan game community they have, and even have their own set section on the site. The best FNAF fan games in the world are posted there, such as Five Nights at Candies. The new FNAF fan game Haven has turned from scratch to Game Jolt. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Thank you.